Atlantis on the Soul Train with a big and everybody showing up digging. It's called Nail It to the Wall. Love on a two-way street. Let me be your angel. It's just on time for spring fever. Please welcome Stacy Lattisaw. Apollo, give it up for Stacy Lattisaw. My Lord, I'm so glad you touched on that because I was going to if you didn't. Let me tell y'all something. I'm like. It's like $2.3 million. Where is this money at? I don't have it. What the heck? Something, something is going on that ain't nobody telling me about and I need to find out what the heck it is. Okay, so I was scrolling through some pictures and I wanted to share some of these pictures with y'all of some important milestones, I'll say, um, throughout my journey. <laughs> so this is where a lot of the singing actually began. I was in the Glee Club at Kimball Elementary School, the school I attended. And um, I sang, Do You Know Where We're Going From Here? by Diana Ross. This is Narada Michael Walden at our home. As y'all can see, I remember this hairstyle, the mushroom or something. I was 12. Uh, Narada came to our home and we had a piano at our home. And um, so he actually began writing Let Me Be Your Angel at our home in Southeast DC. This was my very first photo shoot over at Atlantic. <laughs> Mayor, Marion Barry, God rest his soul, uh, he attended and he came over to me and kissed me on my cheek. And this is an interesting one here because Whitney Houston and I, God rest her soul, she and I had just released our music around the same time. I was probably 15, so I think I was probably two albums in, but this was the first time I had met her. This picture is well over 40 years, so just about maybe 30, 39 years old. Yep. And this is one of my favorite moments, meeting Smokey Robinson. He too was one of the nicest people I had met. So this is a picture of my brother and I. My brother would come and perform on stage with me. He did background on Love and Toy Street. So at 14, this was the Jackson's tour. I have pictures with Michael. Yeah, Michael, in my opinion, was the greatest entertainer of our time. I know for me, to have that opportunity at 14, as I said before, I immediately said no, because I knew I did not want to be on the road for 13 weeks. 36 different cities? Absolutely not. Um, but um, my mother said to me that it would jumpstart my career. It's what she wanted. And I was like, okay. I think watching her performed helped me a lot. The way that, you know, he, I guess connected with the audience and the way that he, I don't know, he, he just had such an awesome stage presence. I remember a few things that will always stay with me. When I turned 16, um, Michael called me and wished me a happy birthday. And I thought it was somebody playing on the phone. I did not think that it was him, right? Did I believe it was him. So I was outdoors playing with my friends. And my mother's like, Stacy, someone's on the phone for you. And I'm like, who in the world's calling me? So I get to the phone. And he's like, hi, Stacy. I'm like, hello. This is Michael. I'm like, Michael who? <laughs> so he's like, this is Michael Jackson. Wish you happy birthday. I slammed the phone, right? I was just so, I just could not believe that Michael Jackson took the time to wish me a sweet 16th birthday. And he sent me some flowers. And I was just, I was like, wow. I, I, I never, I will never forget that. Well, let me see how far do I want to go back. Oh, I'm going to try to put it all together very quickly. So, okay, being a child star in the first place was definitely taxing for me. 
I recently did some research on child stars, okay? And there are not a whole lot of them um, that actually survived. Um, it was an interesting journey for me because I grew up around a lot of adults, right? And um, I, when, by the time I was 12, I recorded my very first album. And um, my whole life began to change. That was something that I was kind of thrown into. It was never my dream to be a professional singer. It was never my dream to be a childhood star. It was never my dream to, to travel the world. It was never my dream to open for the Jacksons. It was never my dream to be this celebrity. It's not what I wanted to do. My mother um, was born and raised in DC, right? So she went to school with Marvin Gaye. And at the time, he formed a group. And my mother was the lead singer of the group. And um, he was the piano player. My mother's name was Sandra Storm, right? She just had an outstanding voice. And um, so by the time I was six years old, I started singing along with her in the kitchen. And that's when she you know, I guess she realized that I could sing, but like I said, it was not what I wanted to do. So because I was 12, I mean, how many people go in the studio and record at 12, you know, at 12 years old? But anyway, yeah, so, but they had to make the songs fit my age. So the songs couldn't, they, they couldn't, they had to be age appropriate. I was so small and so short that the, the, the earphones wouldn't stay on my head. They had, I had to keep adjusting them, right? They were just too big. So Van McCoy would come in, in the, wow. I'm sorry, I just had a moment. Mm. Woo, I had a flashback. God's been so good, because he's kept me. Um, but yeah, I, the very first album, I went into the studio and it was written and produced by the, the late, great Van McCoy, right? So, I finished the whole album in three days. I had already learned the song, songs, and yeah, so we completed the album. And, um, but that process was, was, was interesting because, as I said before, I was so new to it. I, I was terrified because I was like, what am I doing in the studio, about to record some songs? Where am I going to go after this? What's going to happen after this? Um, there were times when I literally would cry myself to sleep at night because you would think that, you know, having all this money and traveling the world and, you know, meeting all these celebrities and, you know, being able to do what you want to do, buy what you want to buy, you know, you would think that you'd be like, you know what, this is it. I'm doing it. But, no. I had another flashback, y'all. I'm sorry. The 15, this is the 15 year old me. Now, needless to say, I had already uh, discovered Johnny Gill because we went to school together in Washington, D.C. Um, and we used to have talent shows in my basement. And um, there were several of us that we used to get together. That's just what we did for fun. Um, so, yeah, Johnny sang. I think it was a song by Enchantment. I didn't know he could sing. I, I didn't have a clue. Um, he used to come over my house to flirt with me. You know, I, my mother used to like, tell them boys, get them away from me. <laughs> she used to try to run them away, you know, cause I was only like 15, you know, I wasn't allowed to date. Anyway, um, I heard him singing that particular day and I was amazed. I. I'm like, are you kidding me? His voice was huge, but he was only 16. Like I said, he was a year older than me. I was 15, he was 16. And when I heard him singing, I flew up the basement steps and I said, Mom, you've got to hear Boogie sing. That's his nickname. I said, you've got to hear him sing. I don't call him Johnny Gill. Um, so yeah, my mother came downstairs and she was like, Stacey told me you can sing, will you sing for me? He's like, sure. 
Boogie gets up and he sang that song again and we were floored. My mother was like, oh my gosh, we've got to get Henry. Henry was the president of Atlantic Records. She said, we've got to get Henry to hear him because his voice was just amazing. Um, so he gets up to New York and um, he met with Henry Allen and Henry was the same way. He, he, he was like, he could not believe his voice was like that. So uh, within a week, he was signed to Atlantic Records. And um, he went on to record his first album. It was Henry's idea because Henry wanted him to get more exposure because I had already kind of crossed that line or whatever. So yeah, my manager was not in favor of it. He didn't think it was a good idea, but I wanted to help Boogie. I wanted to push him out there, right? So that's what I did. And um, so we did the duet album and it was successful. So that's when he did another solo album. Um, but uh, yeah, um, we discovered him and that's how that came about. And um, quite interesting times, times have changed. So many people have told me that my songs were their, like their saving grace. So many people have told me that my music literally blessed them and, and, and changed their lives, you know? And, and I'm, I'm thinking that it was probably the anointing of God that was on my music that people felt. But uh, yeah, God's, God's been good to me because um, I remember the sleepless nights. I remember the depression that I dealt with for a long time, you know, and um, it, it was just not an easy time for me. I just felt like at the age of, I think at 24, 25, I felt like I kind of like had enough of that. 